The last time I explored external SSDs, I compared pre-built off-the-shelf models against a DIY enclosure. And I briefly mentioned that if you're after the absolute fastest transfer speeds, then you want to look at Thunderbolt equipped drives. Well, here I am again, and this time I've got a couple of Thunderbolt drives to show you. Is the extra cost worth it compared to cheaper USB 3.2 options? Well, let's find out. This is Klimbo from Zentech Life, where we love all things to do with lifestyle tech and gadgets. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. As always, there are timestamps and chapter markers below, so if you want to skip ahead, feel free to do so. Otherwise, grab a drink, sit back, and let's get into it. It's been almost a year since I last looked at portable SSD drives, and since then, a few new offerings have come out. The good news is that an increasing number of portable SSDs are now equipped with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, which allows for transfer speeds of up to 1000 megabytes per second. These include a new Western Digital MyPass port SSD and a version 2 of the SanDisk Extreme portable SSD. How about that Pro model that I do have? Well, is there a new version? Yeah, there's a version 2 of that, and it's been updated with a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port which doubles the transfer speeds up to 2000 megabytes per second. Now, before I go any further, I just want to clarify the USB naming system, which annoyingly all sounds very similar to each other. USB 3.2 is offered in three variants, Gen 1, Gen 2, and then Gen 2x2. Two two. This handy graph should help you understand the difference between them, with the slowest being Gen 1 at 5 gigabits per second, Gen 2 offering twice the speed at 10 gigabits per second, and then Gen 2x2 two two being twice as fast again at 20 gigabits per second. I find USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 two two quite a mouthful to say, so I'm simply going to refer to it as Gen 2x2. Two two. Now that that's over, let's get back to it. The caveat with a Gen 2x2 drive is that the computer you're connecting to will also need a compatible Gen 2x2 port to fully utilize the faster transfer speeds. And as far as I know, only a handful of premium motherboards have Gen 2x2 ports. When it comes to laptops, at the time of recording this video, I basically couldn't find any laptops with it. Of course, if you're on a desktop computer and you don't have a Gen 2x2 baked into your motherboard, you can, of course, buy a Gen 2x2 expansion card, but then that adds to the complication and expense of buying a USB 2x2 drive. So as you can see, Gen 2x2 isn't nearly as common as its slower variant, the USB 3.2 Gen 2. This leads me to the focus of this video though, portable Thunderbolt drives. I'd argue that right now Thunderbolt ports are more common than Gen 2x2 ports, whilst also offering speeds of up to 40 gigabytes per second, which is double of what Gen 2x2 offers. So which drives are Thunderbolt compatible? A few pre-built models include the Samsung X5, Sabrent Rocket Extreme, and the Lacey Rugged SSD Pro. The bad news? You're going to have to expect to pay quite a bit more for a Thunderbolt drive, and it's not uncommon to see them costing two or maybe three times more than a USB 3.2 drive. You also can't replace the internal SSD without voiding the warranty, so you'll be stuck with whatever internal SSD comes pre-installed. And so you've probably guessed where I'm going with this, DIY Thunderbolt enclosures. And fortunately, I do have two on hand that I've tested, the OWC Envoy Express and the Oracle Thunderbolt 3 enclosure both of which promise to be affordable and user-replaceable drives. Let's start with the OWC Envoy Express, which is priced at US$79 and designed by a pretty reputable company. This looks like a solid option for an ultra-fast portable SSD. If it's a full-size M.2 drive, has a black anodized aluminum housing and includes a 25cm Thunderbolt cable. Unfortunately, despite Thunderbolt's 40 gigabit per second connection, which theoretically should offer up to 5,000 megabytes of transfer speeds, the Envoy Express is limited to 1,553 megabytes per second. There could be a number of reasons for this, such as thermal limitations or that it's powered solely via the Thunderbolt connection. But nonetheless, 1,553 megabytes per second is still 50% faster than the latest USB 3.2 Gen 2 drives. Naturally, Gen 2x2 drives should theoretically reach 2,000 megabytes per second and thus making them faster than the OWC. But remember, you do need a compatible Gen 2x2 port on your computer too. 
Moving on to the Oracle Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, this one is a little bit pricier, coming in at around 100 US dollars depending on your region. As with their previous USB 3 enclosure that they also sell, the Oracle comes in two variants, an all aluminium shell and a transparent plastic shell with a small metal heatsink panel. Here I have the plastic version as it was cheaper and I enjoy the aesthetic of transparent cases. If thermal performance is important to you though, then the aluminium version will probably suit you better. Anyway, whichever one you buy will fit a full-size M.2 drive, and a small bonus is that the Oroco comes with a longer 50cm Thunderbolt cable. Oroco's website doesn't make it immediately obvious what the rated transfer speeds are, but a bit of digging around shows it should be capable of up to 2,300 megabytes per second, which again is quite a bit lower than what Thunderbolt is theoretically capable of, but still more than twice as fast as a USB 3.2 drive. In terms of physical dimensions, depending on what you compare them to, both the OWC and Oracle are either a similar size or just slightly larger than USB 3.2 drives. Anyway, enough about the specs, let's look at some performance data and see how much of a difference there is. My test suite involves two benchmark apps, the first being Blackmagic's Disk Speed Test, which also tells you how suitable your drive is for editing various video formats, and the second test uses Amorphous Disk Mark, which simulates sequential and random read and write tasks, which should reflect more typical day-to-day -day activity. For all DIY enclosures, I also used a Western Digital SN850 NVMe M.2 drive, which is rated for up to 7,000 megabytes per second transfer speeds, thus eliminating any bottleneck that might come from the NVMe drive itself. Starting with the Blackmagic speed test, the Oracle Thunderbolt enclosure is wicked fast with read and write speeds of 2,415 megabytes per second and 1,278 megabytes per second respectively. The OWC Envoy Express, as advertised, didn't exceed 1,553 megabytes per second and topped out at read speeds of 1,431 megabytes per second. Also, write speeds of 1,149 megabytes per second. That's still noticeably faster than the USB 3.2 SanDisk Extreme Pro and Oracle Enclosure, which both max out at just over 900 megabytes per second in read and write tests. Compared to the USB 3.2 options, this gives the OWC Envoy Express a respectable improvement of around 60% in read speeds and 25% in write speeds. More impressive though is the Oracle Thunderbolt Enclosure, which when compared to the USB 3.2 drives, shows an impressive 165% increase in read speeds and 40% increase in write speeds. The Oracle Thunderbolt Enclosure was also the only drive that Blackmagic Speedtest marked as suitable for 10-bit 422-4K 60 frames per second video footage. Moving on to the amorphous disk mark test, the Oracle Thunderbolt 3 again destroyed the competition, topping out at nearly 2,800 megabytes per second in sequential read speeds and just over 1,400 megabytes per second in sequential write speeds. The read speed was quite a surprise as Oracle themselves claim that their enclosure is only capable of 2,300 megabytes per second transfer speeds. Anyway, the OWC Envoy Express, which again is somewhat limited by its advertised speed of 1,550 53 megabytes per second was still able to reach 1590 megabytes per second in the sequential read test and was only slightly slower than Oracle in sequential write speed with 1257 megabytes per second. Despite the limitations of the OWC, it's still up to 50% faster than USB 3.2 variants with both the SanDisk and Oracle USB 3 enclosure maxing out at around 1000 megabytes per second in both sequential read and write tests. And when it comes to random read and write tests, there's some good news, as the OWC was able to keep up with the Oracle, offering near identical speeds of just under 1,200 megabytes per second in random read tests and 330 megabytes per second in random write tests. The USB 3.2 drives couldn't quite keep up with the pace of the Thunderbolt drives, and they both hovered around 220 megabytes per second. Unfortunately, the SanDisk in particular really struggled when it came to random write tests, hitting a measly 10 megabytes per second. The Oracle USB 3 enclosure fared a bit better and was able to maintain roughly 100 megabytes per second in random write tests. This further reinforces my previous video's recommendation that a DIY enclosure can be a better option as it allows you to choose your own NVMe drive. But who knows, maybe SanDisk's second generation of their extreme portable SSDs have better performing internal drives pre-installed. 
So in terms of percentage improvements in sequential retests, the Oracle Thunderbolt drive is a whopping 180% faster than USB 3.2 versions and 40% faster in sequential write tasks. The OWC Envoy Express also offers noticeable speed improvements of around 60% in sequential reads and 25% in sequential writes. When it comes to random read and write speeds, regardless of which Thunderbolt enclosure you choose, compared to a USB 3.2 drive, you can expect an improvement of over 400% in random read speeds, and at least 200% in random write speeds. If we return to the SanDisk terrible random write speed of just 10 megabytes per second, then the Thunderbolt drives are theoretically over 3000% faster. That's right, they're not twice as fast or even 10 times as fast, but over 30 times faster. Having said all of that, these are synthetic benchmarks and simply comparing read and write speeds doesn't really translate well into real world performance. So I also did a few file copy tests, which involved copying a single 25 gigabyte video file and then a 47 gigabyte folder that has around 9,000 smaller files, which includes things like PDFs, docs, PowerPoints, JPEGs, and a few other file formats. When it came to the single 25 gigabyte video file, the Oracle Thunderbolt enclosure was once again the fastest, completing the task in 18.55 seconds, followed by the OWC Envoy Express, which did it in 20.78 seconds. And then both the USB 3 drives managed it in just over 26 seconds. This results in the Oracle Thunderbolt enclosure being around 30% quicker and the OWC Envoy Express about 20% faster than the USB 3.2 drives. When I moved on to transferring the 47 gigabyte folder filled with many smaller files, the Oracle Thunderbolt drive managed to copy it in 56.88 seconds, the OWC in 59.27 seconds, and the Oracle USB 3 in 68.86 seconds. The SanDisk was the slowest, taking 71.14 seconds. Here, the Oracle Thunderbolt is only around 20% faster and the OWC is 16% faster than the USB 3 offerings. As you can see, these percentages are nowhere near the same figures seen in the synthetic benchmarks, proving that benchmarks don't necessarily reflect what happens in real-world scenarios. So what's the conclusion? It's clear that portable Thunderbolt drives offer best-in-class performance, providing between two to four times faster speeds than USB 3.2 drives, especially when we compare synthetic benchmarks results. However, it's no secret that Thunderbolt devices tend to be more expensive too. Off-the-shelf models like the Samsung X5, Sabrent Rocket, and Lacey Rugged Pro range from around $300 to $400 for one terabyte. An equivalent DIY solution like mine, which uses the Oracle Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, priced at $100, coupled with a one terabyte Western Digital SN850 SSD that costs around $200, it matches the lower end price of pre-built offerings. However, the SN850 SSD might be a bit overkill as the Thunderbolt connection caps out at just below 3000 megabytes per second. So you could save yourself around $60 by picking up a slightly slower SSD, such as the XPG S50 Lite or the SX8200 Pro, both of which are capable of speeds of just over 3000 megabytes per second meaning they will still utilize the maximum throughput of a Thunderbolt connection. So if you do that, it brings the price down to just $240 for an insanely fast portable drive. And when compared to USB 3.2 drives, which typically cost around $160 regardless of whether it's pre-built or DIY, then you can potentially get two to 400% performance increases for only 50% additional cost. And if you ask me, that sounds like a pretty good deal. So am I saying that everyone should buy a Thunderbolt SSD drive instead of a USB 3.2 version? Well, no. It really depends if you feel like you need that speed. As my real-world tests show, your average day-to-day -day tasks like copying files and opening applications won't magically execute in half the time. In fact, most people will probably find regular USB 3.2 drives plenty fast. Additionally, USB 3.2 drives are cheaper, more widely supported, and will likely work with any USB-C equipped device. However, if you do own a Thunderbolt equipped device and you insist on having the fastest performance possible in a portable drive, whether that's because you always edit raw 4K, 6K, or even 8K videos, or you run out of internal space on that Razer gaming laptop, and you want to buy a blazing fast external SSD so your load times aren't affected, then a Thunderbolt equipped SSD drive will serve you very, very well. 
If you're interested in buying any of the products I featured in this video, you'll find my affiliate links in the description below. And just to be clear, it doesn't cost you anything extra when you use my links, but Amazon does give me a small tip if you purchase something through the affiliate link. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about these Thunderbolt and USB 3 drives in the comments section below. Also, if you like my content, I'd really appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content from me, then consider subscribing too. For now, thanks again and I will catch you in the next one.